If you took a tour of the beautiful state of Florida on any given day, what would you expect to see? Well, you'd see life, diverse and plentiful. You'd see impressive vegetation, miles of stunning beaches, and amazing wildlife. But what you wouldn't see is the lifeblood that flows beneath the state. The colossal Florida aquifer system provides drinking water to millions of people and feeds hundreds of freshwater springs all throughout the state. This year, the University of Florida decided to pay homage to the state's greatest resource and stunning springs as we present our canoe Aquaflow. My name is Mary Sullivan. And I'm Kevin Carabale, and we are Aquaflow's co-project managers. In August, the team sprang into action by holding a brainstorming session where we asked members to let their ideas flow and challenged everyone to ask themselves this question, what if? Now, we wanted them to use the vast amount of knowledge and data collected from previous years, but we dared them to do things differently in order to create a faster, more detailed, and competitive concrete canoe. We designated six individuals as technical leads who focused on innovating our canoe's hull design, concrete mix design, construction, paddling, and visual display. With two project managers at the helm, six technical leads, and over 30 members, the team was ready to dive right into this year's competition. Once everyone had a crystal clear understanding of the year's schedule and critical path, the team was ready to navigate the design and construction of Aquaflow. After further brainstorming amongst themselves, the whole design team members asked, what if there was an alternative approach to finding the optimal whole design? This one question led to dozens of hours of data research, whole designing, and eventually the fabrication of five scale models using a CNC router. A new point system was developed to rank each scale model's performance in both the straight line and rotational speeds. The results from these tests were then scaled in relation to known data recorded from timing last year's canoe in all the races at the beginning of the year. The team took one step further to create a new and improved rotational test to better simulate a bow initiated turn around a buoy. The results from both tests were compared with the 2016 national race times and race points were awarded to each of the proposed holes. After all these efforts, the best hole performance was achieved with a profile that features a flat bottom bow progressively transforming into a rounded stern. The construction team then asked themselves, what if we can make the construction process more accurate to achieve the most replicative design of Aquaflow's proposed hole? For the first time in our school's history, the bow and stern foam pieces and all 24 cross sections of the wooden form were precisely fabricated using a CNC router. With the release of the rules, the mix design team asked, what if we could use the new aggregate requirement to our advantage? After researching potential aggregates that met the ASTM C330 requirement, the team decided to experiment with expanded shale and clay, or ESC. After finding the ideal ratio of ESC aggregate sizes, the team discovered increases in both the tensile and compressive strength in comparison to last year's canoe, while still maintaining a desirable weight. These results eventually led to the complete elimination of pour over in the mix design and saved the team approximately $700. The mix design team then asked themselves, what if we could introduce a new sustainable material that could help reduce the amount of Portland cement in our canoe? Research conducted at UF indicated that sugarcane bagasse ash, a byproduct of the sugar industry in Florida, could lead to a possible cementitious replacement. Numerous mixed trials resulted in 20% replacement of Portland cement with the sugarcane bagasse ash. This rich black cementitious material also provided the desired pigmentation mimicking the dark abyss of the springs. At this point, all of our ideas and efforts came together and we were ready for casting day. But just before the creation of our canoe, over 100 hand-cut aesthetic inlays were placed along the wooden form, boldly encapsulating the spring's theme all around our canoe. Bubbling with excitement to build the canoe, the team asked, what if we could streamline the casting day process? We switched our method of concrete placement from using a pneumatic gun to hand placing the three layers. This new system cut out four hours of casting labor and reduced the usual 15 batches of concrete down to only nine batches per layer. The University of Florida Concrete Canoe Team hopes that the overall construction process of Aquaflow inspires teams around them to ask themselves what if so that they too can see how one simple question could lead to more purpose-driven innovations.